Please stand. Our first hymn is number 183. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
May God, the Father of all mercies, cleanse you from all your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Creator and Redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 148. One four eight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights of all. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. You mountains and all hills fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and all animals. Kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth. Young men and ladies, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Please be seated for our first reading. Heard that the Gentiles also has received the word of God. 
So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from Revelation chapter 21, 1 to 6. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had, had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with man, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things had passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, 
I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the waters of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing our gradual hymn, number 525, The Church is One's Foundation. When Judas was gone, 
Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. <coughs> My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word made flesh, for your love towards us, your children. May your words inspire the hearts and minds of your children. May you bring them into your love and fellowship and bind them to you, just as you are one with our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before we sit, can we sing number 617? Worthy or worthy are you, Lord? <laughs>
John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It's a word that is used to love very much in our society that we live today. You know, uh, I haven't done any scientific, scientific um, investigation or looking at numbers, but I'm sure if you Google the word love, it will probably be among the most used, word, most used words on the internet or wherever you are in our society today. And at times when you look around you, you think, okay, this word is well used, but where is the evidence of it in how we live our lives? As Christians, and for those hopefully who will come to know Christ in the fullness of time, we are called to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be Christ-like. To follow Christ is a call to faith and also a call to love. And the gospel reading, that text that I used, is also used as an opening sentence on Monday, Thursday, John 13, 34. Bandatum novum do vobis, a new commandment I give to you, to love one another. So a whole service is literally based on that Monday, Thursday before we get to Good Friday. Because if Christ has not loved us, we will not have suffered the passions and death because we are worth saving. And we should be under no illusion or delusion, to be totally frank, that um, <laughs> we love God so much that God came to die for us because all that we have done has been almost against the will of God. But God saw that there was something worth redeeming in us. Even Judas, he gave him an opportunity to repent and he still loved him even though he went to do what? To sell him off to the leaders of the day. It is easy to love someone you are friends with, or you, or family, or relationships. One of the interesting things is looking at ourselves, you know, if we take the mirror of Christ, look at ourselves. Every family has a black sheep, doesn't matter how you call it, you know, has a black sheep, you know. That uncle, that auntie, that brother, that sister, or someone that stresses you up. But you know, we give them a long stream. Isn't that right? We always, you, you tolerate them. But if it is somebody else who does one tenth of what they've done, we go nuclear, we go ballistic, the world will know. Isn't that true? Relationships we can give a long rope for them to do what, as I said, hang themselves. But anybody else, I'm equally guilty of it. It is human, but we are called to be what? To be better. We are called to be better because Christ was better and he showed us the way. Called to love your enemies. You might think this is a, a bit from the New Testament, is a few thousand years old, it won't work today. It's not meant to be like that. And yet, if we truly love each other, I can tell you there will be an end to war. It is also very interesting that those who can send other people to war really send their own kin to war. And if they do, they're like 10,000 miles behind the front or in a very cozy environment. It is easy to send other people to shout your cause. And at the end of it, throughout the centuries, whether within family, within friends, between nations, has it actually resolved anything? 
in all honesty. I think you've probably heard my story, my fictional story. We are not talking to that family and you say why? Because in the year 1601, their father stole a chicken. And so for the last <laughs> six, seven hundred years, the two families have been at war because somebody stole a chicken a few hundred years ago. How do you know? We found the bones at the front of at their doorstep. Actually, it was Mr. C and his family at night who caught the chicken, cooked it, ate it, and put the bones at somebody else's doorstep. And they stood at the corner. So all these years, centuries, these two families have been at war. And the guilty party is watching them. And they probably won't even know what their ancestors did. Why am I saying this? When we wage war with each other, when we wage war against nations, even after you've conquered or left, that evil and anger still runs deep for centuries to come. For those who will come after us, who have no idea or inclination. And that is why nations today are at war. Because we don't see each other as brothers and sisters. But let's pause. We ourselves, when we become Christians, when we totally hone our faith, as the Bible tells us, the old and the new man is always warring within us. Every day we go through that challenge. Is this right? Is this wrong? Should I do this? Shouldn't I do that? Is it Christ-like? And the more you go up the spiritual candle, the more you can see all your mistakes written large. In South Africa, after apartheid, and also a bit towards Rwanda, they had the Truth and Reconciliation Forum where enemies have to come back to beg for the forgiveness of the communities or the people that they killed to their family and tell them how it happened. And some of them in Rwanda and I believe Namibia, before they could come back into their village, they had to come and sit and tell them everything. So you are sitting in front of the family of those you have killed and they have to um, forgive you and they, I think they have a cleansing ritual, whatever it is, to allow you to come back because of the evil that you have done. It must be hard to know that somebody murdered your father, your mother, your brother, sister or child to be living next door to you. You know, it takes great strength to actually truly love. It is what defines the men from the boys, the girls from the women. It is hard. I'm not talking about the love that you have for a fleeting moment. This is that which goes to the core of your being. All of us in here, and those who will be watching later on, we have all felt the pain of betrayal, yes, haven't you? Of hunger or family not agreeing together. So even among the twelve disciples, there was Judas. But Christ still had to love him. Then there was the eleven. Peter denied. And what did Christ say to him to restore him back? Do you love me? More than this. Three times because he denied Christ three times. All of us have denied Christ more than three times. And I put it, those words of Peter to you, do you love Christ more than these? Put that in your heart and mind. And yet, there is nothing new about it. We heard some weeks ago in Acts, in our reading from Acts of the Apostles, you know, the conversion of, of Paul in Acts chapter 9. You can go back and read it again. Acts 9 and 10 actually is good for you to read over the week. 
when Saul, who martyred the first Christians, St. Stephen, yes, pursued them, killed, and he led them, and he met the Lord on the Damascus Road. And then he was humbled, and the Lord said to him, Saul, 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 why do you persecute? You know, we fail to understand, as Genesis said, we are made in God's image. So when we persecute someone, when you hate someone, a part of you also hate God. Remember that. Hold on to that. Acts 9.5 And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Christ could have killed him, could have humbled him. It didn't happen. Then Ananias, he saw a vision and Ananias was told to do what? To go and pray, to lay his hands upon him. And Saul had been told that, guess what? A man will come to lay hands upon you. But Ananias, Acts 9, 13 said, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call upon thy name. And God said, I have called him as a chosen instrument. But what he said was also interesting in verse 17b, when um, our father Ananias went to Saul before he became Paul. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So even our enemies are, can be instruments and are instruments for God use. Because we are all God's children. We are duty bound to pray to change the hearts and minds of men and women around us. And if you keep on hating it will not, you will not be a good disciple of what? Our Lord Jesus Christ. It is hard. I'm not telling you it's a very easy road to walk. It is a very hard road to walk. To love, to truly love, not as we see on the internet, on social media or, or whatever. I'm talking about true Christian love that does not require the person to say, I'm sorry. It's hard. Christ did not wait for us to say, we are sorry, did he? He didn't wait for us. Saul spent three days in prayer and fasting without food before Ananias came to him. And you might think that is the end of it. Immediately in the next chapter in Acts chapter 10, the conversion of Cornelius. You see, there are many people who believe in Christ. They are at times not able to say so publicly, or they do not know how to articulate this. As St. Philip said to the Ethiopian eunuch, who was reading the Bible, saying, Do you know what you are reading? And he became baptized. Only God knows the hearts and minds of us, his children. And so Cornelius was praying, and the Lord said, Send people to Peter, and gave him the name and the address of the house. And yet in Peter's vision, a true Jew. Jews and Gentiles don't mix together. Jews and Gentiles don't mix together. Just like somebody will tell you, I am maybe Scottish, I am Irish, we should not have anything to do together. Or we want to have our own independence. Or we want to do X, Y, Z. I'm not trying to get involved in all that issue, but just trying to show you about divisions in humanity. Big island, small island. I'm from West Africa, East Africa. I'm from Thailand, and we're from China. I don't like Indians, I don't like Chinese. You know what? We only have a hundred years on this planet, in this life. And if you have more than that, be thankful to God. Actually, 70, three score and 10. Anything above that is what I call the bonanza years. Yeah? If you make 70, thank the Lord. And why was our age limit reduced? Because the heart of man is very evil. 
Imagine some nasty people not dying. The world will be hell on earth. Worse than this. Think on it. To love is hard. It is very hard. There is no easy way around it. Christ came to die for me and for you and for those yet to be born because we are his children and he has seen that we are worth redeeming. Cornelius didn't know how to articulate it. He believed in God. So Peter had his vision. And the Lord said to him three times, <laughs> all this manner of food, rise Peter, kill and eat. But he said, no Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And it happened three times here. Yeah? What God has cleansed, you must not call common. You never know who God has touched. If you are so full of hatred and you will change your mind, you will never be able to be a good apostle to be sent out to share Christ with them. Even if you are talking, your hatred will come true. What you say will not be what? Sincere. You know, you can stand before somebody, this is usually the best one when you're at work and they're trying to give you a reason why they shouldn't give you that promotion or wage increase. They first of all boost you up. Oh, Mr. J, you are such a hard working character. We like your work. You walk like a donkey. X, Y, Z, and they boost you up. And then, however, it's the crucial word, or uh, but, oh, I'm sorry. You know, you didn't quite make a cut this year, maybe next year. You've heard the spill for the last 10 years that you can time it to the last second where each full stop and comma and the pause will come. And you see others do it, getting all this stuff, and you just wonder. Life at times can be like that. But in Christ, there is no deception. What you see in Christ is what you get. Yeah? When Christ said, I love you, he didn't make any excuses. Even when he knew the evil that would contaminate him at Gethsemane. Not for himself. If only this couple pass me by. But let your will be done. Can you imagine someone so pure? to take on all the evil of the world, past, present, and future. That must be had to contaminate himself with all our sins. Think on it. Think just for yourself of all the wrong things you've done from when you could remember till today. It's a lot. Now think of Justice Judge, Walthamstow, London, UK, the world. That is a lot of evil and nastiness. But only the light and the blood of Christ can cleanse it. Our work is cut out. Again, you could challenge Peter. Why would you go to a Gentile's house? And he told them that vision. This was not written just for their sake, but for us. Not to think that the good news, salvation is only for us. The Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. I will tell you where it is, but I won't. That's your homework. Figure out where it is. One of the last passages or verses in the gospel. So you haven't got far to look at it. Which is also my mission statement. Another story for another time. We are called to go out. But if we cannot love God's creation, unfortunately at the end of the day, by not loving enough, we don't love ourselves. That's what it means. There will be that bit in you. It will keep on expanding. It will eventually cloud you and consume you. 
hatred and violence consumes those who harbor them until it becomes normal. Darkness then becomes normal and the light of Christ is far gone. Let us pray that the world today will know Christ, will allow the light of Christ to shine in the dark places of our hearts and minds. Us as a church, as a community, people, and for nations and those who make decisions, there is enough darkness, enough death and destruction. <laughs> Even those who have been oppressed, you will think they will understand what oppression means. They then oppress other people because of X, Y, Z without saying anything. As in the last few months that we have seen. You will think those suffering oppression would understand what it means. But even with that, they, people think they are so far better. And yet, we do not talk about the elephant in the room. In Christ, there are no elephants in the room. We are all made in God's image. Until we remember that. Cain and Abel, the, one of the first cardinal sins in the Bible. What was it about? Brother hating brother. Yes? That leads to murder. When we don't love, we commit murder in our hearts. This is what happened. Cain was so jealous, he murdered his brother. Is it any different in the world around us today? You can say the curse of, of Cain, the mark of Cain still marks the world after all that Christ has done. Because we need to intensify our prayer, look at ourselves, and walk for that day when every knee will bend, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Only by allowing Christ into our hearts, to shine his light of grace into our hearts, to drive away the darkness, the lack of love in it, will this world be a better place. But we have to start. Charity begins at home. We have to start with ourselves. So before we go today in our prayers, let us dump, literally dump, all hatred out of our hearts and minds. Let us truly forgive and I've said this, it sounds like a broken record. We are going to say the Lord's Prayer in a moment. Some of you say it, and some of us say it, I don't know, about 10 times a day, when we follow the house of prayer. And there's a crucial word. There's <laughs> many actually, it's a perfect prayer. So don't let's even try and take out one bit. But all of you will know this. Forgive us our trespasses. I can't hear you. And let me turn that over. If I don't forgive uh, for hurting me or whatever it, whatever it is done to me, what am I saying? God don't do what? And I rest my case. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. People forget about that. So if I cannot forgive you, what I'm saying is, Lord, in my prayers, what I'm really saying in my heart is, do not forgive me, Lord. Punish me more. Do not forgive me. Who doesn't want to be forgiven? It is hard. This is a very hard saying. It's simple. And the Lord said, by this, by loving and forgiveness, people will know you are my disciples in the God we living for today. And so, it's not a challenge. Actually, it's not optional. I am mandated, mandatory for you, all of you, to learn to love. Because that is what Christ demands of us. It's not optional. And so when we go out, pray for that neighbor who is oppressing you. Pray for that manager who makes your life difficult. Pray for that brother or sister or cousin or uncle or auntie or uncle who has insulted you. Just do what? Dump them all by the foot of the cross, forgive them and try to move on. Yes, in six months' time, you might remember, I might come washing over you, but do what? Be ready to do what? To say, Lord, I put it back at the foot of the cross. It is hard. 
but it is not optional. We are called to do what? To love. And the reading of Revelation tells us the new heaven. Everybody there is of one mind. There are no different races. If you think, oh, I don't like that gentleman, trust me, you wouldn't make heaven. Because if they make it, <laughs> you can't be in the same place, can you? Have you ever heard of the saying, I will never forgive you until we meet at the foot of, the, at the foot of Jesus or in heaven? You think I said, and I said to somebody one day, I said, how do you know you're going to make heaven? There was silence. I could see the princess going and the eyeballs rolling and probably hatred towards me. It's a challenge. I said, do you think you are going to enter heaven by the works of your hand or by grace? <laughs> the most important thing in this life and in the world to come is heaven. And do you think it's just going to be given willy-nilly? Just to pay the uh, new increase from our utility masters and mistresses? You, we all have to work hard, am I right? Just to pay the wicked bill. Let me end on this. Why is it that at times, since we mentioned that, when an organization makes a profit in 2020 of 1.3 billion now says in 2021 we are posting a loss but our profit is 1.1 billion so we have to sack 5,000 people it's not 1.1 billion the profit no 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 humor me is it not is that a loss in my basic arithmetic I'm not a mathematician super duper it's when you go minus am i right but when you still plus that's a profit am i right it is a lack of love that makes you think you should just sack people when you are making money filthy rich money and so in all aspects of our lives and society let us pray for our politician laws that oppress. Let us pray where we can easily see people living on the streets and we are happy with it or we tend to close our eyes. Christians don't close their eyes to evil and injustice. You can't do that because you are called to love. So in all the ways we can, let us learn to love and make a difference in the world around us. So that people will say, these are truly disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and strengthen you. May you learn to truly love, not as the world loves, but as Jesus loves. That is the matter. Not as the world loves. I don't want internet love. I don't want social media love. Not even husband or wife. I don't want. I want Jesus love. To love as Jesus has loved you. That he gives you the opportunity to come back to ask for repentance of sin and to move on. May God strengthen each and every one of us in our Christian journey. May we learn to truly love, to be truly human, to take a rightful place in the design that Christ has for your lives. Remember this, you are not precious, you are super precious to God. That's why Christ came to die for you. No matter what anybody tells you, your life is worth more than they can even begin to think about and more than they can even imagine. Remember that. You are worth more than that. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. Okay? Because if they say, oh, you are XYZ, it's a simple question. Are you willing to die for me right now? See the look on their face and the answer will be no. Christ came because each and every one of us, we have more precious than anything else, more than gold, more than silver. Ask yourself a question. I keep on saying, ask yourself a question. Did Christ come to die for angels? When Satan fell, did Christ come to die for fallen angels? The answer is no. He came to die for us. And that should tell you how important you are in God's design in all creation. May Almighty God strengthen you as you go out today. 
May you learn to dumb all that has kept you apart from God, all the hatred and violence and anger in your heart. May you learn to drop it at the foot of the cross today and go out praising God. And may the world see that you are truly disciples of Christ. Amen. We stand to sing our next hymn number 205, I Cannot Tell.
printing of your green booklets followed by our prayer. Our living God, the Father of light, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, who is of the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. And he is the right hand. Let us sit or kneel for our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks and praise to your holy name. We thank you for a blessed and wonderful day and for waking us up this morning. We thank you for our lives and those of our loved ones, families, church family, friends and neighbors who all enrich our lives with love and compassion. We thank you for all answered prayers, forgiveness of sins and unconditional love which makes a difference to all lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for your blessings upon all children and young people throughout the world. Guide them in their education and career paths. Help them to retain what they learn and meditate upon it in their hearts. Many are completing <coughs> exams within the next few weeks. Pour your wisdom and peace upon them, Lord, as this is a stressful time for many. May they feel your presence, Lord, with them at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for peace and an end to the wars, conflicts, unrests, and man-made disasters occurring in the world today. We pray for help, resources, and compassion for all in need and desperation. Shine your light upon their path, Lord, so they may follow where you lead. Teach them to trust in you and experience the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Almighty God, we pray for good health for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family. Bless them, Lord, as they continue their duties to serve you and your people. We pray for your wisdom and guidance upon all the governments and leaders of the world. Direct their choices and decision-making according to your holy will, that there will be equality for all people. Let them make peace and not war within their cabinets and worldwide. We pray for all churches and clergy worldwide and at home to be blessed with your Holy Spirit as they set about to face the daily challenges presented to them. We pray for your blessings and grace upon Canon Addy, Reverend Eileen, Canon Vervet and their families as they continue to serve you and your congregation with faithful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Almighty God, we pray for your compassion and healing upon all who have lost loved ones worldwide. May you be their comfort in their time of sorrow and help mend their broken hearts as they continue to grieve and miss their loved ones and have only the cherished memories to hold on to. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Almighty God, we pray for the mental health well-being of all healthcare professionals worldwide. We pray that you will sustain them as they continue to battle the coronavirus 
and many other illnesses not treated during the pandemic. Lift them, Lord, guide and protect them as they perform their duties under your supervision and authority. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, we pray for the faithful departed. We give you thanks for their lives and cherish their memories within our hearts. We pray for the forgiveness of their sins and that their souls may rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect through Jesus Christ our risen Lord, who is alive and raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We stand to sing our offertory hymn number 261. 261. <laughs>
now for our weekly offering. <coughs> Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the gifts of your children, for putting their hearts and minds to give back to you out of what you've given to them. May you bless this money and all the monies given into your church through the different means, gift aid, bank accounts. May you bless your children in their giving, in their going out and in their coming in. May you make us as a church a good steward of all that you have given us to use this money to build up your church in this part of the world and beyond. May it be used to bring light to those who live in darkness. To the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Please do take your weekly flyers with you. It's got um, a list of what is going on. And for <coughs> Deanry Synod members, we have our Deanry Synod meeting on Thursday. So please do look out for your agenda and uh, make sure you put that in your diary to attend. And as we go out into the world, let us learn to live for Christ and to fill our hearts with love and hope of the joy that is with us, within us, and that also awaits us. Let us stand for the blessing. Let us bow the head. Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one of you and all your loved ones, now and forevermore, until the end of the ages. We sing our final hymn, number 935. 935. My Jesus, my Savior. <coughs>
love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.